Hare Krishna. I'm going to have trouble again singing a song that I haven't memorized and uh, not being able to see very well. Can you project the Manasa Deho Geho? Sure. In the meantime, 51. In the meantime, I'll read the um, word for words in the translation. Manasa, my mind, Deho, body, Geho, family, and home. Yo Kichu, whatever, Mora, is mine. Arpilun, I have offered. Tuapade, Tuapade, at your lotus feet. Nanda Kishore, O youthful son of Nanda. Translation, mind, body, and family, whatever may be mine, I have surrendered. At your lotus feet, O youthful son of Nanda. Sampade Vipade, in good fortune or in bad, bad. Jibane Marane, in life or death, Dai, difficulties, mama, my, gela, have disappeared. Tua o pada, those feet of yours, varane, by submissive acceptance. Translation, in good fortune or bad, in life or death, all my difficulties have disappeared because I have chosen those lotus feet of yours as my only shelter. Marobi, Rakobi, slay me or protect me. Jo icha tohar, as you wish. Nitto dash, your eternal servant. Prati toward, tua adhikar, it is your prerogative. Slay me or protect me as you wish, for you are the master of your eternal servant. Jan maubi moi, that I be born again, icha jaditor, if it is your will, bhakta grihe, in the home of your devotee, jani, being born, janma, how, may it be more, mine. If it is your will that I be born again, then may it be in the home of your devotee. Kita janma, how, kita janma, born as a worm, how, may it be, Yata, so long as tua dash, I remain your devotee. Bahir Mukha, a verse to you, Brahma Janme, to be born as Lord Brahma, Nahi Ash, I have no desire. Translation, let me be born again, even as a worm, as long as I remain your devotee. I have no desire to be born as a Brahma, a verse to you. Bhukti mukti spriha, of desire for worldly enjoyment or liberation. Vihina, who is completely devoid, J Pakta, which devotee, Lobhaite to attain Tanko Shanga, his association, Anurakta, I yearn. Translation I yearn for the company of that devotee who is completely free from all desire for worldly enjoyment or liberation. Janaka, father, Janani, mother, Doita, lover, Tanoi, son, Prabhu, lord, guru, preceptor, Pati, husband, Tuhu, you, Sarvamoy, are everything to me. Father, mother, lover, son, lord, preceptor, husband, you are everything to me. Bhakti Vinoda Kohe, Bhakti Vinod says, Shuno Kana, O Kana, please hear me. Radha Nata, O Lord of Radha, to who? You, Hamara Purana, are my life and soul. Translation Bhakti Vinod says, O Kana, please hear me. O Lord of Radha, you are my life and soul. You have cartels?
So it's time to start class, I guess. There's just the two of us here, <laughs> three of us coming. Shota Kumar. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We have someone on the line watching, huh? Hare Krishna, Akhruna Prabhu, this is Shraddha Devi Dasi. Please accept my humble obeisances. Hare Bhav Shraddha, how are you? I'm good Prabhu, thank you. I'm actually driving on my way from the office to the temple. I just got caught up in some stuff here. So you're hearing it, you're hearing it while you're driving, huh? Yes, I am. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I'm waiting for the music to start. This modern technology is amazing. <laughs> that is true. Manasa de ho ge ho jo ki chumora ar pilu tu apade nanda ki sho Manasa de ho ge ho jo ki Arpilu tu apade nanda kisho Sampade bipade jibane marane Dai mama ke la tua o padabarane Jibane marane Dai mama ke la tua O padabarane Maro bi rakho bi Jo icha to hara Nitya dasha prati Tuadhikara Maro bhi rakho bhi Jo icha to hara Nito dasha prati Tuadhikara Janma ho bhi moe Icha jadi to Bhakta grihe jani janma hao mo Janma ubi moe icha jati tol Bhakta grihe jani janma hao mo Kita janma hao jata tu adash Bahir mukha brahma janme nahi aash Kita janma hao jata tu adash Bahir mukha brahma Jan me nahi aash Bhukti mukti spriha Bihina je bhakta Lab hai te thako Shango anurakta Je bhakta Lab hai te thako Shanga anurakta Jana ki jana ni Doita ta noi Prabhu guru pati tu Sarva moi Sarvamoyam 
His divine grace of Haya Charanaravinda Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahangsa Pri Raja Kacharyasto Tarasata Sri Shimar His divine grace Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Goswami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Rinda Ki Jai Nama Acharya Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Prem se kaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaura Bhakti Rindiki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gop Gopinath Shyamakunda Radha Kundagiri Govardhan Ki Jai Shri Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai Shri Mayapur Dham Ki Jai Shri Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai Shri Ganga Mai Jamun Mai Ki Jai Tulasi Devi Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Samaveta Bhakti Vrindiki Jai Gaura Premanandi 
Transcendental Book Distribution Ki Jai, Srimad Bhagavatam Grantaraj Ki Jai, Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai, Krishna Kata Ki Jai, Harinam Sankirtana Ki Jai, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the lotus feet of Sri Sri Guru and Gauranga Hari Hari Bo. Hare Krishna. Welcome. So, the topic of today's class is, does, does anyone know? Uh, karma. karma. Is that it? But, hmm. Worshipping Krishna with our occupational duties. There's a... Of course, this topic is discussed throughout Bhagavad Gita, but there's a um, some verses in the chapter 18. I'll read uh, verse 45 and 46. Oops, I don't know if it's too loud. Please take your books out too, if you have this version, page 730 and 731. It's 1845 uh, and 46. Krishna has just con- been instructing Arjuna on... Uh, the three modes of material nature, and uh, he talks about the uh, worker, the, the action according to mode of goodness, mode of passion, mode of, mode of ignorance, and the worker according to mode of goodness, passion, and ignorance, knowledge according to mode of goodness, passion, and ignorance, understanding according to goodness, passion, and ignorance. He talks about determination, according to goodness, passion, and ignorance, and three kinds of happiness, according to goodness, passion, and ignorance. And then he says that there's no being existing either among the demigods or here on this planet which is free from these three modes of material nature, born of material nature. And then he says that the brahmanas, the kshatriyas, the vaishyas, and the shudras um, they're also distinguished by the qualities that are born of their nature in accordance with the material modes. And he explains the qualities of brahmanas and the qualities of kshatriyas, the qualities of vaishyas and the qualities of shudras. And then in text 45 he says, Sve sve karmanya bhirataha Sangsithing labhate naraha Svakarma niratak sitting Yatabindati tachrinu By following his qualities of work, every man can become perfect. Now please hear from me how this can be done. Text 46 Yatak pravritir bhutanang Yena sarvam idang tatam Svakarma natam abhyarcha Siddhing vindati manavaha word, word meanings Yataha From whom Pravritihi The emanation Bhutanam Of all living entities Yena By whom Sarvam All Idam, this, tatam, is pervaded. Svakarmana, by his own duties. Tam, him, abhyarcha, by worshipping. Sidhim, perfection. Vindati, achieves. Manavaha, a man. 
Translation, by worship of the Lord, who is the source of all beings and who is all-pervading, a man can attain perfection through performing his own work. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. As stated in the 15th chapter, all living beings are fragmental parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord. Who knows the verse? Karavinda? Where's your microphone? Some other people know. Everybody knows. We should have the microphones out, distributed around, so that people can talk. Go ahead. Oh, he has to turn it on. As stated in the 15th chapter, all living beings are fragmental parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord. Yeah. Um, it is mentioned in the 15th chapter, I think 6th verse. Mame vamso jeeva loke jeeva bhuta sanatana manasasani indriyani prakriti sthani karsati. Correct. Prakriti sthani karsati. They are struggling very hard with material nature. Thus the Supreme Lord is the beginning of all living entities. This is confirmed in the Vedanta Sutra, Janmad Yasya Yataha. The Supreme Lord is therefore the beginning of life in every living entity. And, as stated in the seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita, the Supreme Lord, by his two energies, his external energy and internal energy, is all-pervading. All right, who knows that verse? Go ahead. Do you have it? Someone else has it? Uh-huh. Go ahead. He, he talks, starting from Bhumi Rapo Okay, a couple Bhumi more verses later, though. Then he says, Aparayam Vipastan. Aparayam Itastvanyam. The next verse. Prakriti vidhe me param jiva bhuta maha baho yayedam dharete jagat. Eta dhyonini bhutani sarvanitya upadharaya aham krishnasya jagata prabhava pralayasthata. That's the one. What is it? You have it there? You have the translation? So that should be 7 6. 7 6. So it talks, uh, the translation is that all created beings have their source in this two nature of all that is material and all that is spiritual in this world. Know for certain that I am both the origin and the dissolution. Yeah. It also says he's all pervading, so that may be, it may be a different verse, or maybe, uh, you know, 7, verse 7, and he goes back to talk about it in verse 12. Therefore, one should worship the Supreme Lord with his energies. Generally, the Vaishnava devotees worship the Supreme Lord with his internal energy. His external energy is a perverted reflection of the internal energy. The external energy is a background, but the Supreme Lord, by the expansion of his plenary portion as Paramatma, is situated everywhere. He is the supersoul of all demigods, all human beings, all animals, everywhere. One should therefore know that as part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, one has his duty to render service unto the Supreme. Everyone should be engaged in devotional service to the Lord in full Krishna consciousness. That is recommended in this verse. Everyone should think that he is engaged in a particular type of occupation by Rishikesha, the master of the senses. And by the result of the work in which one is engaged, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, should be worshipped. If one thinks always in this way, in full Krishna consciousness, then, by the grace of the Lord, he becomes fully aware of everything. That is the perfection of life. The Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 12.7, Te Shamahang Samudharta, the Supreme Lord himself takes charge of delivering such a devotee. That is the highest perfection of life. 
in whatever occupation one may be engaged, if he serves the Supreme Lord, he will achieve the highest perfection. Om Ajnana Timarandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militang Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtang Sthapitang Yena Bhutave Swayam Rupa Kadama Hyam Dadati Svapadanti Kam Vande Aham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Patakamalang Shri Gurun Vaishnavangscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Rakunatan Vitang Tang Sajivam Sadvetam Savatutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitangsha He Krishna Karuna Sinto Dinabandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshvari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Tarupyascha Kripa Sindhu Pye Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So what is the title of this 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita? The Perfection of Renunciation so Arjuna asks Krishna that he wants to know about Tyag and he wants to know about sannyas. Krishna has already been speaking about this. In fact, Srila Prabhupada entitles it Conclusion, the Perfection of Renunciation. And in, in many ways it's a summary of things that have gone on before. He wants to know about renunciation, tyag, and he wants to know about the renounced order of life, sannyas. And Krishna says, giving up activities that are based on material desire is called the renounced order of life by great learned men, and giving up the results of all activities is what the wise call renunciation, tyag. And then he says that there's two different opinions among learned sages. Some of them say, that all kinds of activities, fruit of activities, should be given up as faulty, but others maintain that acts of sacrifice, charity, and penance should never be abandoned. And Krishna says, now I'm going to give you my judgment. Krishna's judgment is important because he's the uh, compiler of Vedanta, the, the object of knowledge. By all the Vedas, he is to be known. He's the supreme authority, the source of everything. And he says that acts of sacrifice, charity, and penance should not be given up. They should be performed. And that they purify even the great souls. So previously, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna has said that um, renunciation is not simply a matter of stopping work. Um, that you can't achieve perfection simply by uh, even by naishkarmya, by giving up material activities. You don't achieve perfection. But you have to actually work in a spirit of devotion. And, um, in fact, in the beginning of the third chapter, Arjuna says, if you're, you know, after Krishna has told him that all his arguments about why he shouldn't fight the battle were based on the wrong foundation, the misconception, not remembering that this, uh, the spiritual dimension, that we're all these eternal souls that can't be killed, and that um, you know, we're not the doers of activities, and we should uh, become yogis and, and transcend the three modes of material nature and, and uh, stop worrying about fruit of activities and, and uh, become uh, nirvana, shantim, Shanting nirvanam richiti. 
Then Arjuna says, well, then why do you want me to fight the battle? If intelligence is better than work, why shouldn't I just sit down and be self-satisfied? Full uh, realization. And then Krishna says, there's two kinds of people. I've already explained to you. There's those who analyze the elements of the world and practice jnana yoga and those that engage their uh, working senses in acts of devotion and engage in karma yoga. And um, he says that if you just try to sit down and restrain the senses, but you're still attached, in your mind you're still dwelling on the idea of enjoying uh, sense enjoyment, then you're a pretender. And uh, it's far better to uh, engage your working senses in acts of devotion from the very beginning by regulation, by regulating niyamya, by engaging according to principles so that you can gradually curb your mentality of trying to exploit nature. Um, and he describes the cycle of sacrifice, that the Vedas prescribe all kinds of sacrifice and that we have to perform work for the satisfaction of the Lord or otherwise we'll be bound by our uh, works. So this theme is throughout the whole Bhagavad Gita. As he goes on explaining this about how those sacrifices can be done in full knowledge with full understanding that we're not these bodies and that we're not the enjoyers and that we're not the controllers. Everything belongs to Krishna, that our senses are merely engaged in their, in their, uh, with their objects. And uh, eventually we can achieve uh, full samadhi, giving up mentally renouncing all kinds of uh, mental sankalpas for sense gratification and uh, perceiving the Lord with our inter inter internal eternal, transcendental senses. He explains all this in the first six chapters. And then he, in, the, in the middle six chapters, he explains more about himself and his devotional service. And in chapter 12, Srila Prabhupada was quoting from chapter 12 how Krishna says that uh, for the devotee who meditates on his personal form, then uh, Krishna becomes the swift deliverer from the ocean of death and birth. Mrityu uh, sangsara sagarat bhavami nachirat parta right teshan aham samudharta Sri the Prophet was just mentioning that Arjuna had asked Krishna had said in the eleventh chapter that you can only know me you can only see me in this form by pure devotional service and um, Krishna had uh, told him that you should mat karma grin mat pramo mat bhakta you should work for me with devotion and this way you will achieve my perfection and come to me and then Arjuna said well which is better those who worship you as a person uh, or those who meditate on the unmanifested the all pervading the that which is without qualities and uh, and Krishna says the devotees are better that's what Krishna says, without a doubt. He says, they're more yukta, they're yuktatama. They're the most uh, connected with me, intimately united with me in yoga. Those who worship me with faith and repose their faith in me, with their minds attached to me. He says me, when he says me, that means Krishna, is the person, not something else. Mayavadis always try to get around that. Actually, Bhagavad Gita, so many places in Bhagavad Gita, I was just reading today in chapter 13, again, where Krishna was saying, only the bhaktas can understand this. I think it was in verse like 20 or 19. But he says it in so many places in the Bhagavad Gita. Let's look in chapter 13, text number... 19. He's describing the field and the knower of the field. Actually, two knowers. The knower of the individual body and then the super soul, who's the supreme knower, who knows all bodies. And he says, um, Bhakta Vigyaya. Mad Bhakta Etat Vigyaya. Mad Bhava Yo Papadyate. So that my devotees, having known this, knowing this, 
attain my nature. And Srila Prabhupada emphasizes here once again, he's saying, my devotees, my bhaktas know this. This is the Bhagavad Gita is not meant for non-devotees. As he says later at the end of the 18th chapter, that you can't even try to teach it to non-devotees. And yet non-devotees try to comment on it. And when they do, because they don't like the conclusion that we should become devotees of Krishna, they always say, well, when he says, devote, when he says you have to become my devotee, he really means he's identifying himself with the impersonal Brahman or something like that. <laughs> they misunderstand. That's why it's called Bhagavad Gita as it is. Mm-hmm. As it is means you can just take the direct meaning. You don't have to try to twist some um, obscure meaning out of the words. Krishna says, those who are attached to me, it means him, Krishna. It doesn't mean some, something that he's referring to something else when he says me. He says me a lot in Bhagavad Gita. So there he says that those who do practice this impersonal practice of meditation, they can at last come to me after you know, being equally disposed, engaged in the welfare of all, controlling all the senses and so forth. Uh, but it's a very, very difficult uh, path. Whereas on the, in contrast to them, those who worship me as devotees, what's the verse we were just saying? Te shamahang smudharta mrityu sangsara sakra. The devotees don't have to climb their way up. If they act as devotees, worship Krishna, remember Krishna, work for Krishna, then Krishna comes and gets them. He delivers them. And, it's very, and very quickly. It's a very swift process. And um, so, but then he tells Arjuna, this is what's best. Fix your mind always on me, engage your intelligence completely in me, being completely devoted to me, you live in me. That's the way you should, in other words, he's describing, Srila Prabhupada explains, he's describing spontaneous devotional service of the pure devotees. They can't live for a moment without thinking of Krishna, without being engaged in his service. They can't even think of doing anything that Krishna doesn't want them to do. And uh, they can't, for a moment, think of not doing something that Krishna wants them to do. That's just the way they are. That's the actual, that's the normal, healthy state of the spirit soul. That's what, how the real identity, how spirit souls behave. We can know, ahang brahmasmi, I am not this body, I am spirit soul. But that's just preliminary knowledge. We have to know, well, what is that soul? What is that brahman? How does it behave? How does it, how does it function in its pure state? And it functions as a pure devotee who's always fixed in Krishna. You know, and most of the living entities, it's estimated that three quarters of the whole creation is always, in, is always awake in full consciousness without any ignorance in the spiritual world, engaged fully in devotional service. Of course, there's unlimited living entities, so we see all around us in this world birds and trees and insects and plants and grass, blades of grass and so many humans and animals um, all everywhere. And they're still uh, struggling in Maya. And in the human form of life, we have an opportunity now to get back out. We have a very nice opportunity to become Krishna conscious. So he says that it's best, in his this description in the 12th chapter, he says it's best to become a devotee it's best to become a spontaneous devotee who's always fixed on my devotional service. But if you can't do that, if you're not there yet, if you still have attachments, false, you know, the false ego is very strong. The false ego is telling us that we're the enjoyer and controller and uh, you know, the um, uh, owner of material possessions and that uh, our happiness will be found by... Uh, engaging our senses with its object, with the sense objects in different ways for sense gratification. We can make nice arrangements for that by our by our uh, work. And if we work properly, we'll get good fortune so that we can do that very nicely. And that's the goal of life. And that's how we can be successful in life. And of course, that's the that's the ignorant misconception, and we have to get out of that misconception. So Krishna says, if you can't 
spontaneously live in me with your mind and intelligence completely fixed in me, then you should practice the regulative principles of bhakti yoga, which are designed in such a way that you will attain a desire, a strong desire to achieve Krishna. And, and then he says, if you can't even do that, if for some reason you're, you know, you're, you should try to do that, but if you can't do that, then at least work for me. So this is all personalism. Well, these first three suggestions Krishna makes, they're all to worship Krishna, the person. And um, in the purport to the uh, verse where Krishna says, work for me, Srila Prabhupada describes the, how should we do that? We should become sympathetic to the propagation of Krishna consciousness we, sh- we should understand that the devotees are on a mission is fa- to satisfy the heart's desire of Krishna. Krishna himself, he doesn't interfere. If someone, if his spirit soul is persistent in wanting to try to be an enjoyer and be forgetful of Krishna, Krishna won't interfere. But Krishna doesn't want them to do that. Krishna loves them. He remembers them. He comes with them. He's compassionate on them. But he says, okay, I'll give you what you want. But Krishna's pure devotees on this earth, they know that uh, let's give Krishna what he wants. Let's wake these people up. It's also good for them. If, they're, if people are in ignorance, they're suffering, birth, death, all kinds of miseries, even their so-called material happiness, which they're striving after, and if they get it, they think, they're, you know, they think that if I get this, I'll be successful. When they do get it, it's not what they thought it was going to be. It's not as great. It gets old. It gets stale. And it doesn't completely satisfy the self. And so the devotees are on this mission to spread Krishna consciousness everywhere, to distribute Srila Prabhupada's books, Hare Krishna, and spread this Krishna consciousness everywhere, to chant Hare Krishna out on the streets of the cities and invite everybody else to chant the holy names of Krishna without offenses and giving up their offenses, becoming very, very joyful and happy and becoming free from death, and full of bliss, a kind of happiness that can be tasted by chanting Hare Krishna that you won't taste anywhere. And the materialistic person, you, know, you can show me any materialistic person, no matter how beautiful, successful, wealthy, learned, respected, you know, uh, high social position, important government post, whatever, they won't be able to be one million ta- millionth as happy as someone who just chants Hare Krishna with a pure heart. Just that chanting. You don't even have to change your position. You don't have to have money. You don't have to have... Maybe you could have some japa beads and a bag, but you don't, you don't have to have uh, fancy exercise equipment or any kind of other apparatus. And you can be very, very happy by chanting Hare Krishna. So there's this mission on this earth to distribute Prabhupada's books, to chant Hare Krishna, to help establish temples like this one where people can come and gather and be in a society of devotees. And one should sympathize with that and uh, spend one's hard-earned money to support that. And that's called working for Krishna. Matkarma Krin, doing Krishna's work. Uh, Let's see where he says that in the 12th chapter. Abhyase pyasamarto si mad karma paramo bhava mad artang apikarmani korvan sidhim avapsyasi. If you cannot practice the regula- regulations of bhakti yoga, then just try to work for me because by working for me, you will come to the perfect stage. And then finally, he gets down to what Arjuna had been asking about in the beginning of the chapter. What about worshipping the unmanifested? And in, cha- in text 11 and 12, he talks about cultivation of spiritual knowledge, impersonal meditation, renouncing the fruits of one's work without giving them to Krishna, but just renouncing them, giving them to good, you know, giving them away to charity or something. Trying to give up all the results of work and trying to be self sit Yes, you had a comment? I had a question. Yes. Roji, Roji uh, talking about occupation, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, 
okay i'm talking about myself right mm-hmm. so uh, occupation today is so dissatisfying in in general for me that you know because of my own qualities you know uh, i am a shudh qualities of a shudra but want to be a administrator like a kshatriya and land up you know i mean pretend a brahmana and i don't know where i am you know mm. so and on top of that making it more difficult is the general work environment itself the general work environment yeah, you know whether it's business or self employment it is very uh, competitive and uh, very stressful mm-hmm. in its way so when you say work uh, and you give your occupation for krishna you know uh, what i start i started thinking is how do we first make that occupation um, you know a little blissful so i can give it for krishna mm-hmm. so that thought comes to my mind so what would you suggest proji what should i well you might be in the wrong occupation and i don't think that in this class uh you know i can i to underst- you it i it already seems like you've given some thought to what kind of person am i what kind of qualities i have what what is making me dissatisfied with my occupation and um and you shouldn't expect krishna says all occupations are covered by some fault just like fire is covered by smoke fire is a very good thing but even fire has some smoke it's hard to approach it without getting some smoke in your eyes and stuff so you have to tolerate something uh, you shouldn't think the other gra- the grass is greener somewhere else it will always be better something else but uh you should think what should be your occupation maybe you actually cut out to be uh, a brahmin and a teacher and you should be trained up as a full time devotee in this kan temple shave your head and and learn how to do the p- puja and the altar and learn how to give you know go and give classes to people or go out on book distribution so that's something that i wanted to raise tonight was that uh when i joined the hari krishna movement in the 1970s prabhupada was present and the attitude that was b- very prevalent among all the devotees and there's some controversy over whether this was the attitude directly coming from prabhupada or whether we were uh putting our own spin on it but the mood was very much that uh if you became enlightened by reading shri the prophet's books you should give up your job give up your school give up your career give up your you know and live in the temple with the other devotees full time don't have to see the face of a person who doesn't believe in krishna unless you have some particular purpose to go out uh on book distribution and try to convince them to take to krishna consciousness and this was a very prevalent attitude in our in our iskon in the 1970s in fact when rabindra swaroop he was almost finished with his phd in temple university in pennsylvania he was uh, studying religious studies he was not your typical uh dropout hippie you know we had a phrase in those days tune in turn on drop out turn on means take lsd that was uh, timothy leary anyway i don't need to bore you with our american history and social social history and everything but he was studying religion and as a student of religion he had come to accept uh shri prabhupada's teachings and he you know wrote to shri prabhupada and prabhupada wrote him a letter and said Oh, you only have a few months left. You should continue and get your PhD. That will be very helpful for this movement, PhD in religious studies, and then you can use that to help this movement. And but the devotees of the temple they said, "No, no, we don't go to college." It's like, you know, they said, "Prabhu didn't really mean that. He was just humoring you." They somehow or another they convinced him <laughs> that he shouldn't stay in college because that was not our culture in the Iskon in those days. Everybody should just you've woken up to this truth we were already dropping out of the materialistic society of our parents the war in vietnam the corporate rat race and we wanted something more authentic and and more beneficial and why were people more just people didn't have some people didn't have enough money everything was based on money and some people had all the money and they had fancy country clubs and fancy cars and other people didn't and why can't we just all share everything and be friends and have love and peace that was the hippie ethos in those days of course they didn't know anything about the three modes of material nature so they thought we can take drugs we can have sex outside of marriage 
and these other problems. And of course, it all became very degraded very quick. You know, here in San Francisco, they had the summer of love and all these naive, happy hippies, not so happy, but hoping to be, you know, carefree hippies came out to dance with flowers in their hair. And within the five or six months, it was all drug dealing criminals were all exploiting everybody and it was scary and a bad scene and stuff like that. So they didn't realize that their unclean habits and their failure to, you know, actually cultivate the mode of goodness was not um, a successful way to have a society that was uh, just and peaceful and prosperous. And the way to have such a society is Varanashram Dharma. Everybody should be engaged in some occupation according to the directions of Supreme Personality of Godhead, the spiritual master. Um, and but they should all be performing those occupational duties to satisfy Krishna. So that was the, the, the goal that the hippies wanted, was a good idea, but the, uh, but the means of getting that, because they were too attached to this idea of freedom from all authority and uh, rejection of all bosses, not even, they didn't know that Krishna, Krishna is the boss. We should accept isha vasya midang sarvam, everything belongs to the Lord, and we should be his servants. But anyway, to answer your question, you know, you've already started doing some introspection about it, and maybe you're in the wrong occupation. But if you're not, um, you should understand that tolerance is a part of Krishna consciousness. Be tolerant as a tree. Um, you, if you get up early and chant 16 good rounds every day, you can handle anything. You go out there and if someone's mad at you and they're, you know, and they're yelling at you and everything, you have to show them. I, I had problems at my office that uh, I had one uh, senior attorney who was angry with me for uh, how I had written up some report or something or how much progress I'd made. And while he was yelling at me, I was just smiling. <laughs> and he was getting very, very angry because I was supposed to be afraid of him and I was supposed to be, you know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'll do better, I'll do better. But I was too peaceful and smiling and he was m making him furious. So you should show that yourself that you're, you're a good employee and you'd be concerned and you want to do better and you're really sorry and, you know. <laughs> I mean, we're shudras. Let's face it, you work for some boss and he can ch chastise you and say, you know, I want a different... You're his servant, that's your position. You have to say, yes, yes, sir, yes, sir, I'll do better. And if you are uh, honest and sincere and you try, he'll like that and he'll feel affectionate towards you and, and, uh, or he or she, whoever your boss is. And when it comes time to get your annual performance review, he'll write good things about you. <laughs> but, but a devotee is different. He's, he doesn't think that his happiness will come from um, uh, you know, having a big position in this uh, organization or, you know, he knows that his happiness will come by pleasing the spiritual master, pleasing Sri Krishna, going on book distribution on the weekend. You can't wait to, for that to come. Or that with the money he earns, he can give uh, money to help support the mission. There was one devotee, I think, Dayananda, who had got a job in IBM. We had some devotees who had jobs. I remember when I was in Vancouver, Punya Kirti was a chartered accountant, a good Canadian accountant, and he used to come to the morning program. And then, you know, at the end, you know, he would Tulsi Puja, Mangalarti, Japa period, Srimad Bhagavatam class, greeting the deities, everything, take prasadam. And then he would be, you know, uh, dressed up in a suit with a, he had little knit ties he used to wear. And I remember this was odd, you know, we didn't see that much in our temples in those days. All the devotees had shaved heads and and he had short hair, you know, and he was a good... Now he's, I think, the main accountant down for the Alachua community. But, um, but that wasn't popular. If you read the Lilamrita, Satsurup Maharaj tells us, you know, Satsurup Maharaj was older a little bit. He had a college degree. He had been in the Navy, U.S. Navy, for about four years, I think. Um, you know, honorably discharged. The, good rank maybe, I don't know whether he, you know, he must have been above 
not just a seaman, you know, who's probably an ensign or something. I don't know. But um, he had a job as a social worker in the New York City or county. I don't know how they do it, by boroughs or whatever. And the other devotees were hippies. They had come to live with the Hare Krishna down in the lower Manhattan and they, then they moved in with Prabhupada and they were in the temple all day doing different services in the temple. And Satsarup Maharaj was going out to, to work. And Prabhupada had initiated the devotees and he asked them to shave their heads. So Satsarup Maharaj went with his shaved head and a little sika to work as a social worker in New York City. And it, these days, it might not have been that big of a deal. I see a lot of, you know, in the courts, all the sheriff's deputies, it's a very popular hairstyle for the sheriff's deputies to have like a military buzz cut with hardly any hair on their head and stuff like that. It's, it's become a popular thing now. But in those days, uh, men's fashion was to wear long hair. And hippies wore really long hair, and it was sort of a badge that they had rejected the materialistic values, and they were against the war, and they were against the... Uh, organization man in the gray flannel suit and everything. But even the people who were, you know, if you look at um, the TV news broadcasts from 1973 or something like that, you know, you'll see the guys had long sideburns and longer hair and beards and mustaches and they were pretty, it was, it was kind of a style. And to see a guy with a shaved head looked like... Uh, I mean, when Satsuru Maharaj showed up for work, they thought he had like lost his mind or something, and uh, they didn't. They didn't even want, you know, he was a caseworker. He had people were coming to get off welfare or what, on welfare, and he was advising members of the public. And they didn't want to have their employee looking like that. And he said, "But it's my religion. I, you know, you have Jewish employees wear the yarmulke on their head, and you know, just like nowadays we have Muslim." Ladies wearing hajib or some other head covering and things. This is my religion. I have to wear my hair like this. You have to, you know, it would be discrimination if you don't let me work like this. And in fact, he, they called up, because Rupanuga also had a job with the, uh, I think, you know, like one was in Queens and one was in the Bronx or something like that. I don't remember. It's in the Lilamrita. You can read it. So they called up the other office and they said, yeah, he's not just crazy. We got another one of them here too. He's got a shaved. <laughs> yeah, they wear the little ponytail in the back. It's their religion. I guess we got to employ them. And then one day, Satsuru he didn't come and tell Srila Prabhupada what he was planning to do, but he thought, you know, all the other devotees are so surrendered. They stay in the temple all day and they just do devotional service, but I'm going to a job. And now I think I'm going to, you know, kick it up a notch and get my devotional service to the next level. And he went in and he quit his job. And then he came told, and told Srila Prabhupada, you know, I quit my job and I'm ready to now be a full-time devotee like your other students here in the temple. And, you know, he thought Srila Prabhupada would be very happy with that. And Srila Prabhupada wasn't pleased. He said, you're the only one who has a job <laughs> paying the rent. <laughs> Your donations every month are how we pay the rent. You know, what are we going to do to pay the rent? So I don't remember now whether he went back and got his job back or, or something. But Srila Prabhupada didn't want him to quit his job. It wasn't necessary. It wasn't required. And Jayananda had a job here in San Francisco. He was driving a taxi cab. Actually, Jayananda was a qualified engineer. He had gone to college as an engineer, but, but he had tuned in and dropped out. And then he later he got a job to su help support the temple as a taxi cab driver earning money. So it wasn't really the case, or there's a question, was it really the case? But Prabhupada was encouraging devotees. He wanted, them to, he wanted the men to have shaved heads. He didn't really you know, give you the time of day if you, if you didn't even have enough surrender to shave your head. He wasn't that interested. <laughs> in, I mean, the devotees that were coming around and stuff, he really, he was serious about, he wanted serious devotees who would surrender. And he would also uh, encourage, you know, he was looking for some, he made young men into sannyasis. Take vows of sannyas when they were 24 years old. And, uh, and the sannyasis were the ones who he always seemed to have around him that were his, you know, mostly his closest 
by the time that I joined anyway, there was like a group of young men that were sannyasis, younger, some of them older, in their 30s. The oldest ones were in their 30s. We thought that was really old. You know? and, they were, and they were the ones that Prabhupada spent the most time with and gave the most instruction to. So there, there was that culture in ISKCON of um, dropping out of mundane society and being full-time devotee. And yet, uh, as I was saying, for example, Dayananda was a householder and he got a job in IBM, which in those days was a really good company. They took care of their corporate employees, you know, Big Blue or whatever it was called, right? And, uh, and Srila Prabhupada instructed him that you should keep your job, be, do well at your job, you're a family man, but you should give 50% of your paycheck to support Krishna consciousness. And if you do that, you will not have any, you will not know any scarcity, you won't have any trouble paying your bills and living a peaceful, happy, prosperous life. And uh, Dayananda did that until he retired. And in fact, he said, I never had a, I never had a financial worry or never had a care. I followed Srila Prabhupada's instructions and I raised my kids and I don't know if they went to college. I'm sure they probably did. But this is a uh, subject that there's, I see even controversy, uh, you know, among devotees. Some devotees say, um, devotees have told, senior devotees have told me, well, if you didn't go to college or you didn't finish college by the time you joined the movement, you should just not go. You should just surrender and, uh, and serve uh, Krishna consciousness. And don't worry, Krishna will carry what you lack. Why do you really need such an education for? And to a certain extent, there was a, some truth in the fact that um, you know, we were young and uh, susceptible. Our faith might have been weak and tender. And if we started going back to associate with materialistic associates, um, we might lose our faith in Krishna consciousness. We might stop following the regulative principles or stop chanting our rounds or, or whatever. So there might have been some truth that, you know, sure the Prabhupada didn't have. I was talking to one devotee the, the other day on the internet, uh, a, an advanced brahmachari, lifetime brahmachari, I think, and he was saying, uh, Prabhupada didn't send us to college. He didn't have any look throughout Prabhupada's teachings. He didn't have anything kind words to say about college. <laughs> There were slaughterhouses and, you know, full of, you know, materialistic people. But my attitude is a little different. And, um, you know, but we should, anyway, our own attitudes aren't important. We're here to talk about what Krishna's attitudes are. And Krishna says that uh, renunciation, it doesn't depend on external things. Srila Prabhupada often says that, that, the pure devotee and the materialistic fruit of worker, they may seem almost exactly the same to someone, for, someone who doesn't know, who's just looking at the outside. One is going to the office, the other is going to the office. One is, you know, or whatever occupation they have, they may look just the same. But internally, they're very different. So devotional service consists of these activities, hearing, chanting, remembering, worshiping the lotus feet, you know, and so forth. Becoming a friend, becoming a servant giving everything, offering prayers. These are, these are the activities of devotional service. It, it's not that one has to be a brahmana, engaged in teaching students and worshipping the deity and, and to, to be a devotee. Or one has to be a sannyasi, wandering from place to place and instructing people on the spiritual values of life um, without a home, without property. Um, it's not, Krishna says that this path of devotional service is open to the shudras, to the women, to the vaishyas, even to people uh, from outside the Vedic system. If they follow this path of Krishna consciousness, of chanting his holy names, remembering him, and so forth, uh, they can also attain him and attain the top perfection of life. And then he says, even more so, if, the, even, if even they can do it, everyone should do it. It shouldn't be you know, sometimes people say, oh, you know, atheists and impersonalists, they say, oh, you can do your devotional service because that's the easy path for the women and children, but it's not the really high class path. That's what we do. We're the, we should be more respected. We're the high. 
But no, Krishna doesn't say that. He says, then if, if even the women and shudras and vaishyas can do it, then, then even more so the brahmanas, the kshatriyas, the pious brahmanas, the saintly kings, um, they've also come to this world of birth and death and they should worship me, but just for mom. He doesn't say, oh, they don't, they, they don't need the easy path, they should take the difficult path. He doesn't say that. There's no point in taking the difficult path. The difficult path, the only reason why there is a difficult path is because some people are just so hardcore, envious, inimical of Krishna that they're not willing to take the easier path. So they can also make some advancement take in the difficult way. So devotional service doesn't depend on these external things. Rather, one should be engaged according to one's propensities and one should, in from whatever position one is and whatever stage of detachment one has from material enjoyment and stage of realization of devotional service and in whatever stage of life one is one should find a way to do one's duties properly um, and as Srila Prabhupada said in the purport we read to consider that Krishna has given me this assignment and I'm carrying it out for Krishna as his servant for his pleasure and uh, to do it without attachment you know that no I'd rather do it this way or I'd rather do it that way whatever so I can't answer your question in class. I think you should discuss your question with, uh, with you know, people. You know, it's an intimate question to figure out for yourself in discussion with spiritual uh, guides. That you know, and and uh, it's not it's not a one size fits all thing. Some people should be engaged. If we're trying to convince everybody to become devotees, and. So that means we want, we need to put our we need to have our agents out there, you know. Now there's a U.S. Congresswoman who's a devotee, and you know we want college professors who are devotees and judges who are devotees, and someday a president of the United States will be a devotee, and you know this we want that. And so, but I talk with some devotees, and they say, well, yeah, but you shouldn't send your kids to college and try to get him to be the president of the United States. He can become a preacher, and then he'll be the advisor to the president. Well, it's up to depends on what his propensities are. It depends on what his abilities are. If he's a paramahansa, yeah, why should he bother becoming a president? That's the way Prabhupada was always teaching. You know, it's just like Radhanath Swami tells that story of the class he was giving where he was challenged, what if everybody became a Swami? And he responded, what if everybody became an accountant? <laughs> you know, what would they do? <laughs> so some, we need some Swamis. Yes, we need some Swamis. And when Prabhupada was challenged like that, what if everybody became a Swami? He said, oh, don't worry, they won't. You know? <laughs> Actually, if they did, Krishna could make an arrangement. You know, if everybody became a pure devotee, a paramahansa, you know, the whole atmosphere would change. You wouldn't have to worry about, you know, somebody would do something, throw a seed on the ground, and it would, there would be enough food to eat. It, would, it wouldn't be a problem. We make, the, we make the world difficult because of our um, mentality. Because of the contaminations of this age of Kali, everything, everyone's on each other's last nerve, and they're all quarrelsome, and they're all. But Srila Prabhupada said, "Don't worry, no, not everyone will be a. We're asking them all to become a Swami. You don't have to work so hard. You don't have to. It's not because of your work that you're getting happiness and distress. You're getting that because of your past work and past lifetimes. And if you and if Krishna's taking care of everyone." So you don't think he'll take care of someone who's completely dedicating himself to Krishna? He will. This is like a siddhi that you know pure devotees have, that they don't have to struggle like everybody else. They can just spend their time chanting Hare Krishna and doing their service to spread the Krishna consciousness movement. And somehow or another, they, they're satisfied with little. And somehow or other, they manage. But if they're not on that level of detachment and they want to get a job and they want to be a little more uh, financially secure, less dependent, um, that's fine too. That's, they should find out how to do it for Krishna. So I want to read a passage from the um, instructions of Prithu Maharaj. And... Uh, this is in the fourth canto. I'll just read it out loud to you. And if those of you who can look it up on your thing, you could follow it. But it's uh, chapter 21, verse 33. 
4.21.33. Tam eva yu yang bachatat mavritti pir, mano vachakaya gunaik swakarma pihi, amayena kama, dukhangri pankajang, yatadhi kara vasitartha siddhayaha. Prithu Maharaj advised his citizens, engaging your minds, your words, your bodies, and the results of your occupational duties, and being always open-minded, you should all render devotional service to the Lord, according to your abilities and the occupations in which you are situated. You should engage your service at the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead with full confidence and without reservation. Then you will surely be successful in achieving the final objective in your lives. Purport by Srila Prabhupada, as stated in the 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Svakarma na tamabhyarchya. That's the verse we just read. One has to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead by one's occupational duties. See, whatever we do, we should do it for Krishna. That's the point. It's not like, you know, someone is a judge, but then they become a devotee, and we tell them, oh, you have to stop being a judge, or you can't send your kid to law school and let him become a judge if he wants to, or whatever. It's, that's too much external and too much negative. Lord Chaitanya, Murari Gupta was a doctor, but Lord Chaitanya engaged him as a doctor in devotional service. So somebody's going to be in college. Somebody's going to be in, you know, uh, uh, service as a, as a janitor or a, you know, carpenter. Somebody's going to be, somebody has to drive a bus, whatever. And the point is, um, not that we have to tell them you have to stop doing that. We tell them you have to know how to do it for Krishna. But if it's convenient and there's a good opportunity that you can stop doing that and become a full-time, and you have the qualities to become a full-time teacher of Krishna consciousness, uh, that's useful too. If your spiritual master sees you have that ability and that propensity and engages you in that way, that's very nice. That's, uh, I think that was going on in the 70s. Srila Prabhupada was saying that um, there is a very much of a need in society present for people who can be teachers of Krishna consciousness, who have the qualities of brahmanas and can do the work of brahmanas. And, I mean, let me finish this purport and then I'll explain some more. This necessitates accepting the principle of the four varnas and four ashramas. Prithu Maharaj therefore says, Gunaik Swakarma Pihi. The phrase is explained in Bhagavad Gita. Chatur varnyang maya shrishtam guna karma vibhagasaha. The four castes, the brahmanas, kshatriyas, vaishyas, and shudras, are created by the Supreme Personality of Godhead according to the material modes of nature and the particular duties discharged in those modes. A person who is situated in the mode of goodness is certainly more intelligent than the others. Than others. Therefore, he can practice the Brahminical activities, namely speaking the truth, controlling the senses, controlling the mind, remaining always clean, practicing tolerance, having full knowledge about one's self identity, and understanding devotional service. In this way, if he engages himself in the loving service of the Lord as an actual Brahmana, his aim to achieve the final interest of life is attained. Similarly, the kshatriya's duties are to give protection to the citizens, to give all his possessions in charity, to be strictly Vedic in the management of state affairs, and to be unafraid to fight whenever there is an attack by enemies. In this way, a kshatriya can satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead by his occupational duties. Similarly, a vaishya can satisfy the Supreme Godhead by properly executing his occupational duties, engaging himself in producing foodstuffs, giving protection to cows, and trading if necessary when there is an excess of agricultural production. Similarly, because shudras do not have ample intelligence, they should simply engage as workers to serve the higher statuses of social life. Everyone's aim should be to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead by engaging his mind in thinking always of Krishna, his words in always offering prayers to the Lord, or preaching about the glories of the Lord, and his body in executing the service required to satisfy the Lord. 
As there are four divisions within our body, the head, the arms, the belly, and the legs, similarly, human society taken as a whole is divided into four classes of men according to their material qualities and occupational duties. Thus, the Brahminical or intelligent men have to execute the duty of the head. The Kshatriyas must fulfill the duty of the arms. The Vaishya class must fulfill the duty of the belly. And the Shudras must fulfill the duty of the legs. In executing the prescribed duties of life, no one is higher or lower. There are such divisions as higher and lower, but since there is actually a common interest to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there are no distinctions between them. The question may be raised that since the Lord is supposed to be worshipped by great demigods, like Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and others, how can an ordinary human being on this planet, serve him. This is clearly explained by Prithu Maharaj by the use of the word yatatikara, according to one's ability. If one sincerely executes his occupational duty, that will be sufficient. One does not need to become like Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Indra, Lord Chaitanya or Ramanu Jacharya, whose capabilities are certainly far above ours. Even a shudra, who is in the lowest stage of life according to the material qualities, can achieve the same success. Anyone can become successful in devotional service, provided he displays no duplicity. It is explained here that one must be very frank and open-minded. Amayinaha. To be situated in a lower status of life is not a disqualification for success in devotional service. The only qualification is that whether one is a Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, or Shudra, he must be open, frank, and free from reservations. Then, by performing his particular occupational duty under the guidance of a proper spiritual master, he can achieve the highest success in life. As confirmed by the Lord himself, Striyo Vaishyas Tata Shudras Teapiyanti Parangatim, Bhagavad Gita 9.32. It does not matter what one is, whether a Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, or a degraded woman. This phrase, it does not matter what one is. Srila Prabhupada uses that phrase in another purport in the first canto, where he's talking about, you know, whatever one's occupation is as a poet or a, as a, or a philosopher, one should use it in Krishna's service. He said, it does not matter what one is. So it's not that, you know, in one sense, we need to train up people who can be learned in Vedic scriptures and play the role of real brahmanas in society that can give spiritual knowledge. But in another sense, whatever you are, be a devotee. Use your abilities according to your ability to uh, be a devotee under the guidance of a spiritual master. Chant good rounds and read Prabhupada's books and talk about them and distribute them. You don't have to be a professor or a... Uh, congressman or military general or anything. If one engages himself seriously in devotional service, working with body, mind, and intelligence, he is sure to be successful in going back home, back to Godhead. The Lord's lotus feet are described here as Kama to Kangri Pankajam because they have all power to fulfill the desires of everyone. A devotee is happy even in this life because although in material existence we have many needs, all his material needs are satisfied, and when he at last quits his body, he goes back home, back to Godhead without a doubt. So, yes, go ahead. Oh, just a clarification there. So how important uh, is it that we should find the occupation? I understand that you know, uh, occupation is completely irrelevant as long as we are doing it for Krishna, giving the results to Krishna, Uh, And whatever distress is maybe for the purification, you know, in that occupation, right? So, uh, the question still I have is, uh, uh, Krishna, Lord Krishna also says somewhere in Bhagavad Gita, I can't recollect, but he says that uh, do the occupation per your qualities, you know. Yes. Rather than doing something which is not as per your qualities. Shreyan Swadharma Vigunaha Prodharmat Swanushtitat Swadharma he says this twice, actually. He says it in the third chapter. He says it's better to be destroyed in carrying out your own duty than 
to carry out the duty of another even if you do it very well. And in, and in, um, and in the 18th chapter, he has the same beginning. Shortly, at, We were just reading 45 and 46, but let's look. I think it's 48. Chapter 18. Forty-seven, Shreyan Swadharma Vigunaha Paradharmat Swunushtitat Swabhava Niyatang Karma Kurvan Napnoti Kilbisham. It is better to engage in one's own occupation, even though one may perform it imperfectly, than to accept another's occupation and perform it perfectly. Duties prescribed according to one's nature are never affected by sinful reactions. So I wasn't saying. I, I don't think I was saying. No. Doesn't matter what you do. Do whatever you, you know. You, no, you should. You should be. You should be engaged according to your actual nature. You should do what Krishna wants you to do. Don't think about what you want to do. Arjuna wanted to act like a Brahmin, right? Mm-hmm. I'll just. I won't resist. I'll just sit down on the battlefield. If they want to kill me, let them kill me. Or I'll go to the forest and I'll live by begging, because I think that's better and more saintly. And Krishna said, I don't want you to be saintly. That's not your job. I want you to be, I want you to be a heroic fighter and destroy. I have a, I have a mission in this world. I've come here to destroy a bunch of people. I want all these soldiers to be killed. And you're, I picked you as my instrument to do that. So it's not just like, it doesn't matter what you do. No, you have to do what Krishna wants you to do. And you have to find out what your proper engagement is. And if you are um, a very, very advanced devotee, then you could do the engage- You could actually accomplish the engagement of any different. You have the qualities to be even a brahmin, if you have to. But if you don't have those qualities, you shouldn't try to engage in being a brahmin. And it's not. It's not even better. You have other qualities that should be engaged somehow else. It's, it's like a whole, the whole world is Krishna's uh, property. And to make it run properly, he has, he's engaging different people in different kinds of things, different kinds of duties. You know, Elephants are doing one thing and monkeys are doing something else. They all have a sort of role to play. You know? you ever see who has little children that watch the Lion King, the circle of life? No, maybe I'm... I don't, nobody here. But it, there is a natu- there's a natural order in the world, is what I'm saying. And, uh, and also in human society. Human society has its own way of being organized. And that way is called Varnashram Dharma. Now, Bhakti Raghava Swami was here and he was telling us, uh, Srila Prabhupada wanted us to have farm communities in the United States to shed, show a good example to people of how, to live a peace, how we can live a peaceful and successful life um, without, you know, destroying Mother Earth and, and you know, with all the, without all these cars and, fact, you know, and things. And we, we create an imbalance in human society with all the ugra karma of misdirected civilization. So he was saying, simple living and high thinking, we should give, it a, we could, we should give a, a, um, an example of that for the world. And Prabhupada, that was one of Prabhupada's programs. They wanted us to show how to have how to show people how you can... Right now there's global warming and they don't know what to do about it. Well, you know what to do about it? Stop all the factories and stop all the cars. But they can't stop. We're addicted to it. We're all, you know, we've all got this uh, big carbon fuel energy consumption lifestyle. And um, people don't want to go back to live in the farms. All the kids growing up in little villages... Uh, want to go up to the big city where there's bright lights and Coca-Cola and fancy wristwatches and, you know, lots and lots of people to meet and all kind of action going on. The the more um, peaceful and pure life of just uh, working in harmony with the cycles of the seasons and the moon and, and growing the crops seems boring to them when they think something's going on somewhere else. So they used to, when the uh, Americans, farm boys, had to go off to World War I, then uh, the, the uh, phrase was, or the saying was, how are we going to keep them down on the farm when they've seen the sights of gay Paris? You know? 
How are you going to get them back to just be satisfied plowing in their fields now that they've seen the can-can girls and the, and the, you know, the uh, bars with all the cocktails of fancy mixed drinks and stuff like that? So, so Prabhupada wanted us to show that, no, this is an actual higher, happier way of life. So that's one. You know, uh, Bhakti Raghava Swami showed us a movie where Prabhupada had these four movements. And I'll see if I can remember them right, but um, there was the uh, holy name chanting Harinam Sankirtan movement, there was the temple worship movement, there was the spiritual initiation movement, and there was the classless society movement. And he called this, interestingly, and we just read this purport that kind of explains that. You know, m- most people think, well, Varnashram Dharma means you have to dis- divide society into different classes and then the different social classes have different statuses and should be respected more and treated and given different deference and and so forth so how is it that it's classless society everybody in you know the communists want a classless society but even in their um, you know social engineering project they recognize that you know they have to be grades of labor and the the guy who can, the general who can run the big operation or something like that is not the same as the guy who pushes a broom. You know, you can't expect them to be in the same. They're all workers. That was the idea. We're all workers. The communist idea is basically a nice idea, except they've, they've, missed, they've missed the point that we're all working for Krishna's satisfaction. They're thinking we're all working to produce material goods so that we can exploit material nature and be enjoyers. And Bhagavad Gita is teaching. No, we're not really the enjoyers. The, the jiva is assert, asserting himself as purusha in this material world, trying to ma- lord it over material nature. And he won't ever become happy that way. But he should understand who the real purusha is. And that he's also a kind of prakriti, para prakriti. And his job is to, to, to utilize his energy and his work to satisfy Krishna. So how do we do that? You don't have to change your occupation, but you may have. You may sh- maybe you should change your occupation if you could be doing something better with your time, more fulfilling, more satisfying. More main thing is it should be good for your devotional service. So you should discuss these things with your spiritual master, someone who really knows you, and you really who you really trust, and who really has insight into how to help you actually achieve the goal of life, which is to remember Krishna always and become attracted to Krishna and not, and not become bogged down in, in materialistic, ignorant, mode of ignorance ways of thinking. And you should approach such a person honestly and openly, in confidence. It's not, it's not the subject for the public class, what should I, you know, raise your hand and because you see some famous Swami that doesn't really know you and you raise your hand from the back of the class and say, Oh, what should be my what should be my service? You know, um, we should try to. We need to have a society that's organized and uh, that works. So we have to cooperate. Therefore, there's all these talk nowadays in ISKCON circles about um, lines of authority. Right? Some sannyasi comes in from India that doesn't know anybody, and then you know he says something in class, and Bhakta Bob decides, oh, I want to stop cleaning the kitchen now, and uh, I want to help, you know, so-and-so Swami start a farm somewhere or something, you know. Uh, no, you should actually be coordinated with your local temple. You f- find devotees that you can work with and work with, with, within a structure so that things get done. It's not an anarchic society. It has to. But it's not. But these social divisions are not meant for one segment of society to lord it over and, and exploit you know, the weaker or lower segment either. They're everyone, the ideal is, everyone knows my job is to serve Krishna. And so even though there's these designations, of he's the priest and he's the street sweeper or whatever, that we're all serving Krishna and we all have a role to perform. You don't think that, oh, the head is important, the leg is not so important, so I don't care if I burn my leg or step, stub my toe or something. I don't care because the leg is not important. No, you, the leg is important too. The head may be more important and given a special position of honor because without it, you know, you somehow or another you can survive without a leg but not without a head. But still, you, you know, your whole body is uh, your body and we're all parts of the same 
society, and so it's the classless society movement, even though there's a recognition of these divisions. That's Srila Prabhupada was explaining that. So the main thing is what what we do, and we all have, and we're all in different walks of life. When we're children, we do something different from when we're older, right? When I was a child, I I played as a child, and when I became a man, I put away childish things. I forget. There's some thing in the Bible like that. But we all have different walks of life when we become a husband, when we become a father or mother. Um, when our parents are elderly and they need help, we have all these relationships and duties to do. Um, and um, we should understand that this is what we're doing with our body because this is what is required of us according to our natures and according to our walk of life. But it's not our real business, right? Our real business, is, it's not... It's not that we're going to get happiness by, um, you know, uh, getting the result of that, of doing those duties properly. So uh, Sutta Goswami says, Atak pumbhir dvija shreshta varnashrama vibhagasa svinushtitasya svinushtitasya dharmasya sangsidhir hari toshana. The ultimate result one can, should properly get by performing all one's occupational duties correctly, is um, to please Krishna. That's the actual conclusion. Not that if you do it correctly, then you'll get an elevated birth, or you get liberation, or you get um, you know, the results of pious activities, wealth and beauty, and, you know, bhogaishvarya gating prati, right? That's the Vedavada ratas, they're engaging people in all kinds of pious performances so that they can get better birth and better opulence and material enjoyment. And Krishna tells Arjuna, avipaschita, they're, they're immature, they're not full, their knowledge isn't, isn't um, you know, complete. And uh, they're just attracted to the flowery language of the Vedas, they don't really know the purpose behind it. But someone knows the purpose, absolute truth, transcending the modes of nature, then all those purposes of the small ponds can be served by the great bodies of water. And similarly, all the purposes of the Vedas will be easily fulfilled by someone who really knows Krishna. See, please Krishna, satisfy Krishna. This is the... So, so Bhagavad Gita Krishna is teaching that real renunciation isn't an external change of dress. It isn't an external change of duties. Yes, we have a renounced order of life in the world, and that's an important... These are the spiritual masters of society that show the example of living the life of renunciation, that we can, sh- that we can show people that someone can actually live that way live and, and um, not, they, they won't lose everything if they just chant Hare Krishna. But that's not um, required to become a pure devotee and go back to Godhead. The real renunciation is anashrita karma palang, karyang karma karoti yaha, sasanyasi, to do what you're do what you're required to do in your situation, but do it with devotion to Krishna and without attachment to the results. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I still didn't understand what do you mean by classless society? Because whenever there is a Maya, there had there will be always classes, whether it is America or India, it doesn't matter. And and the Krishna also in. Bhagavad Gita was trying to tell that this, there is a class. You are a Kshatriya, your nature is like this, so you do your duty. So mm-hmm. he was also promoting that class, class society, not class But you, society. you came after I read the reading about Prithu Maharaj's instructions. But the point is, Krishna was saying, yes, you have to do your duty according to your nature. You have to do your own duty and not do someone else's duty. Don't try to be a Brahmin when you're a Kshatriya. But he was also saying, Vidya Vinaya Sampane Brahmane Gavi Hastini Shuni Chaiva Swapaki. Not just the Brahmanas and the Kshatriyas, but he's saying, even the dogs and the dog eating chandals and the cows and the elephants, you should see that they have spirit soul and they're all on the equal platform. On the spiritual platform, they're equal. Not that you bring an elephant in to become the president or something like that. I'm not thinking about Republicans and they have elephants and Democrats have donkeys. <laughs> <laughs> but not that you bring an animal in and sit him on the throne of the king and try to get him to manage the state. He doesn't know what he's doing, right? He'll just bark and howl and stuff. But 
you should understand that even the animal and even the plant has, is a spirit soul, and due to their conditioning because of association with different modes of nature, they're behaving in certain ways. And so you should behave in them in the right way. It's not that you should just you know, be indiscriminate and walk up to a wild boar and you know, try to hug it and slap it on the back or something like that. You'll get gored. But, um, but you should understand. Or, you know, same thing with a human beast, right? They say that, uh, there's a saying that, you know, uh, um, a wild animal will attack only if it's provoked, but a, but a human being who's an uncultured human being will uh, be envious. Or a snake, I think they say. I don't remember the saying. But they say, Dui pada pashu. Two-legged beasts. You should avoid people who are materialistic, envious, selfish, non-devotees, basically. That, um, they won't be able to be, behave in a civilized way, so they're dangerous animals. So you have, to be, you have to know what their conditioning is and how to properly uh, engage in everyone. But the idea of classless society is that everyone has these designations according to their qualities and the kind of work they're doing, but the purpose is not so that they can have better sense enjoyment, a higher grade of um, uh, you know, material honor and respect or anything. The purpose is because they have that kind of work to do. That, that, that's, that's the understanding. For Krishna. Yeah, for yeah. Krishna. Yeah. And so everyone is serving Krishna. So the feet and the head and the hands, they're all part of the same body and they're not, uh, they're not fighting against each other. You know, we have these four social classes, just like the body has four divisions, head, hands, legs, and stomach. So in, you know, like Marxian uh, philosophy, the idea is that the different classes have irreconcilable, you know, differences, di interests, right? Because the capitalist class wants to pay lower wages. And, uh, you know, in order so that they can advance themselves, they have to steal the surplus labor of the workers. And the workers, you know, so that they all have these differences and that as the economy develops and society develops in a certain way, then those irreconcilable differences become so um, uh, separate that there has to be a revolution and another class takes over and, you know, and so forth. So this is that kind of description. But the, uh, but the Varnashram system of communism... Isha Vasyam, Krishna-centered spiritual communism, is not like that. They say, well, we can find the common, if you can teach people what their real ha where their real happiness lies, where their real self-interest lies, um, then um, the, servant, the servant class should all be completely satisfied. They don't need to get rich, but they uh, should have enough to uh, eat, they should have proper medical care. Their kids shouldn't suffer because they can't get medicine, because they can't pay for it. So there are these distortions in capitalism. Everyone should be able to live a nice, simple life of devotional service according to one's own capacity. That's what Prithu Maharaj was saying. He said, so you might ask, Prabhupada was saying in the purport, you might ask, well, you know, Krishna should be worshipped by great personalities like Lord Shiva, and Lord Brahma, and, you know, how, on those higher planets. But how can we on this planet worship Krishna? And Prabhupada said, don't worry about it. According to your ability, according to your capacity, Krishna wants to see your sincerity. He wants to see your actual effort. And so if we can strictly follow all the rules and regulations of devotional service, we'll develop a strong desire to attain Krishna. If we develop such a strong desire, we won't even be able to stop thinking of Krishna and stop serving Krishna. And if we haven't yet been able to conquer all our bad habits, at least we should make ourselves sympathetic with this propagation of Krishna consciousness, this Krishna consciousness movement. And we should donate our hard-earned money or our time uh, to do some service, to work for Krishna. And these are the three recommendations Krishna uh, proposes to Arjuna in the 12th chapter, before he even begins to re recommend any impersonal meditation or cultivation of spiritual knowledge. These things, three things are better. If you can do them, you don't even need to, to worry about the others. They'll naturally follow. You know, spiritual knowledge naturally follows devotional service. So according to our capacity, according to our 
position in life. We don't have to change that. It will naturally change. But we do have to avoid mundane association. That's part of devotional service. We have to avoid asat sangha tyagat e vaishnavachar. This is the character of, of Vaishnava. Lord Chaitanya was asked, do you need something? Is it too hot? You can turn the air conditioning on, sure. Um, everyone comfortable? We need to stretch. This is a two-hour class. It's a long class, isn't it? So Lord Chaitanya was asked by the residents of Kulinagram in success, successive years in a row uh, about how do we know who, what, who is a Vaishnava. The first year, Lord Chaitanya said, anyone who's chanting Hare Krishna, he's better than the common man. Even if he chants it, even if you hear him chant Hare Krishna once, he should be respected as a devotee. And then, you know, in successive years, he's giving more instructions. But one thing he says is, excuse me, those who are attached to Krishna, they don't want to be in association with those who are attached to mundane activities. Those who are hunting uh, women and and uh, alcohol and you know, when you become a devotee of Krishna, you will be very bored to go with your friends and relatives to the soccer match and have to cheer for one team or something like. That. So, what's the meaning of it? Where you want to look for? Where is Krishna in all this? You might have to go. It might be your duty as a family duty to, and you're giving association to your family members and things like that. But this principle is there that those who are devotees should strictly give up the association of atheists and materialists. And how to do that? If you have a job, you um, I hear a ring. If you have a job, you have to go in the office, and there's atheists all over the place, and they're talking about nonsense, and they're uh, and some of them are going out to the, you know. Uh, whatever, to the bar at night or the naked dance show or whatever, and they're coming back and talking about it very enthusiastically in the morning around the coffee in the kitchen. They're all guzzling coffee. They have hangovers. And, uh, but they'll respect you if you say, no, I'm not, I don't do that. People will respect you. They won't, they won't make you the, uh, uh, um, you know, feel like, Oh, you don't belong. No, you know, we don't. In my religion, we don't drink alcohol. Sorry. In my religion, we don't, you know, we uh, um, don't go out dancing in the nightclubs and stuff like that. And we don't, we don't go, we don't date, you know. Sorry, we don't do that. We get married when we're young and we stay married all our lives. And uh, just, just a small comment. There was a, in my village, a lot of people uh, take cigarettes. Oh, beady, beady. They call beady, it beady. Yeah. Beady. yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, my uncle was sitting, and me, I was there, and then uh, somebody offered my uncle as a respect, if you'd like to have a beady. So he, he just folded his hands, said, like "God has uh, has helped me to be away from this." So I thank God for that. Mm. And then he didn't offer him naturally. But he learned that that's not mm-hmm. a good. <laughs> yeah. Like teaching. Say, see, God has uh, been very kind to keep me away from these such things. <laughs> yeah, it's a good, and he's setting a good example for others. And if people have any intelligence, when they'll see, they're all saying, "Oh, you know, God, we got so wasted last night. We don't even remember what happened." And you say, "You know," and then, uh, you know, they say, "You know, wouldn't you like to go out with us next weekend?" Um, I'm sorry, I, you know, it's not my culture. We don't do that. We don't drink any alcohol. And, we, you know, I have, I have duties to do. I have to go on uh, distributing spiritual books. If they have any intelligence, they'll appreciate that, actually. They'll see that, you know, and they'll want to follow. Whatever a great man does, common people follow. So this may be Krishna's plan. He now has, we used to just have the devotees and say, you have to stay in the temple and you don't. When, when my brother got married and I was a new devotee, I was 17 years old, something like that. Maybe I had turned 18, I don't know. I think I was 17. And my brother was getting married in Florida. And I told the temple president, you know, my brother's getting married. He's my brother. I grew up with him. We slept in the same room, you know. And he's getting married. It's a big deal. I have to go to the wedding. And they said, 
sorry, we don't think you should go. You can't go. We, we don't allow it, you know, because if you go, who knows, you might not come back. And um, I thought about it, Hare Krishna. And I thought, you know, maybe that's right. Maybe if I go, I won't come back, so I, I don't have to go. It turns out he got divorced like a year or two later. <laughs> He's been married four or five times now, like many Americans. Uh, they don't have the institution of marriage. It says this prediction of Kali Yuga. People can't even keep their families together. So that's not our culture, thank God. Yes, Shraddha. So over here, um, when Prabhupada in the purport is defining the characteristics and duties of all the four varnas, so for the Kshatriyas, and this was a little bit surprising to me, he said the Kshatriya is supposed to give all his possessions in charity. Mm-hmm. So that was like, you know, this, the, <laughs> by that definition, there are very few people who were actually Kshatriyas, mm-hmm. like Bali Maharaj, maybe is one, uh-huh. Shibi and Dadichi, just very, very few. Well, the, um, there is a, that is a, um, a recognized value in many cultures that the king is just the, uh, you know, like in the, Lawrence of Arabia, the tribal leader of the Arab, you know, all these warring Arab different groups in this tr- one tribal leader said, I am a river to my people, you know, was his mood, you know. But that's supposed to be the mood of someone who's a leader is that they'll sacrifice everything. And they have to sacrifice, they have to um, uh, be prepared to sacrifice their life in battle defending uh, the rest of the people. So, if that, so that's giving everything. Now they have to live, maybe they have to live in a palace. But as part of the, you know, to, to inspire awe and leadership and the way society works. But they perform grand spectacles of sacrifices in which great amounts of wealth are given away in charity and offered to the Lord. And that's, uh, that's the system. So uh, uh, I, a, uh, if you look at Bhagavad Gita, the qualities by which kshatriyas work, um, they're very, very magnanimous and, and charitable as their natures. Here are the qualities. Uh, text 18, 43. Sharyam tejo dritir daksham yudhe chapya palayanam danam ishwrabhavascha kshatrang karmasvabhavajam Heroism, power, determination, resourcefulness. Daksham means that they're very expert in accomplishing what needs to be accomplished. Resourceful. Yudhe chapya palayanam, not fleeing in battle, courageous in battle. Danam, generosity. Ishwara bhavascha, and they have the mood of leaders. Those are the natural qualities of work for kshatriyas. So yes, they're prepared to give everything. There's a story in the ninth canto. I think it was Maharaj Sibi. I don't remember. Do you remember? The, huh? The dove, yeah. The dove came and said, you protect me from this. I'm a citizen. You protect me from the hawk. And then he said, okay, you know, I'll give my own flesh that the hawk can eat the amount. And then the dove weighed so much. The little dove, he kept cutting off more and more of his body had to be prepared to give his whole body to protect the dove, the little dove. Then they revealed that the dove and hawk were actually demigods that were just testing his character, that he had passed the test. So, yeah, these are the real... So people should learn these qualities of what it means to actually be uh, kshatriyas and vaishyas. And it's, a, and it's a scientific system. It shouldn't be seen as like, you know, we're just sort of emulating some foreign culture or some distant past or something like that. But it's actually a system of, this is the way human beings are made, civilized, to behave. And it's not a system where, um, you know, some people can't get medical treatment. Now they're having this big fight over Obamacare, affordable health care, but it's because of our, you know, capitalist approach to uh, things that we think those, those that have, have, and those that don't, you know, it's their problem. You know, we don't have to be compassionate. We don't have to care about them. But that's not a civilized society. It's not. But at the same time, this idea that, well, the state will just take over everything and, and uh, give everyone according to their needs, 
doesn't work either. It's not the way human beings psych- psychologically work. Um, they have different kinds of duties according to their natures and according to the, to the kinds of work that those people do. But the main point of it all shouldn't be missed. So in Prabhupada talked about Varnashram Dharma in a couple of ways. One, in one, on the one hand, he was talking about how the kshatriyas have to have these qualities, real brahmanas have to have these other qualities that are always truthful, they're always clean, they're always you know, um, peaceful and tolerant and, and have spiritual knowledge and have realization. And like that, samodhamma tupasya shocham kshanti raja, they're tolerant, they're merciful. But on the other hand, he was saying that in any society, you'll find that people are doing these roles. For example, you know, if you want someone to, to have the authority to speak the truth about something, you go to the scientist, right? In, in court, if we want to have an expert witness that can help explain some difficult or technical matter, we go to someone who's an expert in their field. Often it's a scientific field. It could be ec- economics or it could be an accountant or you know, someone who has particular professional training. But the position of who, who has the authority now to speak with authority about what's true and what isn't true and stuff, in modern culture, that, that materialist science, where the, because it's all based on we're not listening any longer to the scriptures and to the ancient sages and to the heroes of the you know, past, learned saints of the past, you know, we're building a new system up from ground one, and we're, we're, what, are, what is our field of study? We're studying the interactions of the, of the material elements. That's really all they're studying, you know. They're not studying about the soul. So we're not sure if there's a soul or not. You know, we haven't seen any evidence. We can't see a soul. So the real brahmanas know about the soul and matter. That's an important part of their knowledge. But people are really enamored by, oh, they discovered the periodic table of elements. They discovered how to make, you know, chemicals that can do these different things or machines that can do those different things. But that's the, so the professors, the college, the professors, the scientists, the PhDs, the, those people are playing the roles, the literati who write the novels and try to, you know, who speak about, you know, the higher values or whatever, they're considered to be like the brahmanas. And um, then the people who have the authority to command you to do something, right? I, I represent the law, I'm a policeman, I say stop your car, pull over, you know. So that kind of authority, administrative authority, you know, you have to, uh, you know, if you... It, it can be nice and civilized, but if you don't obey, it can get, it can get, un, it can be, be uh, you can be quickly sent into the, into the uh, realm of the scoff laws in prison and stuff like that. At the minute, somebody's standing there with a stick all the time. So, those are the certain kind of authorities. That's the kshatriya role is being played. And somebody is the intelligent entrepreneurs who run the farms and factories and businesses and produce wealth in society. And then somebody, and in any society, and somebody has to do all the work. You know, help serve the other class. They don't have the intelligence to organize a uh, business or a big production, um, but they can do what they're told and and uh, be honest. And you know, and there's a place in here in King Prithu Maharaj's teaching where he says that actually the those who are the servants, the shudras, and everything, in a sense, they're the most fortunate because. The, they're humble, they're not tempted to become arrogant and exploit others, and the real nature of the soul is to be a servant. You know, so in one sense, in one, I, I can't find that passage for you, but I remember reading it at one time and being impressed by that. So it's not like we're saying, you know, you should despise the lower classes. And Yes, Krishna is very, very um, affectionate to the Brahmins, and he wants Brahminical culture to prevail. He wants people to respect Brahmins and be very careful. Even in the story of the son of Drona punished in the seventh chapter, of course, Krishna said, Go ahead and kill him. He's not a Brahmin. He, he violated the rules of combat. He tried to blow up your, you know, use a Brahmastra and kill King Parikshit, all these things. Um, 
I don't remember, maybe the Brahmastra came after this, it came after they let him go. But Draupadi was compassionate. And she said, you know, his mother and father, they're Brahmins. His, his father was your teacher. You know, his family, Hare Krishna. So I don't want his mother to suffer the way I'm suffering because he killed my children. So don't kill him. And Bhima was saying, no, what are you talking about? Kill him. Everybody, Maharaj Yudhisthira also agreed. Draupadi has spoken correctly. You shouldn't kill him. He's the friend of Brahman. He doesn't, he doesn't really have the Brahman qualities, but because he's in that family, his friends are real Brahmins, his family members, we should be kind to him, not kill him. And Bhima, Bhima was saying, what are you talking about? We've got to kill the guy. He just he killed your children you know, while they were sleeping. Um, and then Krishna said, you told, signaled to Arjuna that he had to figure out a way to kill him and not kill him at the same time. And he did that by cutting his jewel and his hair, you know, and uh, driving him out from civilization. So, um, so Krishna is very, very affectionate to the brahmanas and Brahminical culture, and Srila Prabhupada wanted to establish that we need to be be able to create a class of real brahmins because society really needs that. Uh, the so-called Brahmins, the so-called intellectual leaders of society don't believe in the soul, what to speak of God. And they're misleading everybody into thinking that you should just eat, drink, and be merry because nothing really means anything anyway, ultimately, because reality is matter. And our own subjective feelings and uh, emotions and all that stuff is not real, it's ephemeral, it doesn't matter. And it, you know. So that, that kind of mentality, that kind of philosophy is described in Bhagavad Gita in what chapter, Mukharavinda? The philosophy of uh, everything is unreal and there's no cause other than lust and to gratify the senses until the end of life is the prime necessity of life. Shraddha, you can say. Someone, who, who knows what chapter I'm talking about? 16. 16, correct. Very good. This is the way demons think. There's no God in control. There's no need to follow scriptural regulations because everything is unreal. That's the way demons think. And the way devotees think, they naturally respect the authority of God. So we have only about one or two minutes left. Any comments or questions? I didn't really talk. I wanted to get into the practical substance of how we can turn our occupation into service of Krishna. So we should be very good about uh, making time to chant 16 rounds of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And that will um, put our intention in the right place for, so that when we do, and then, and then as Krishna said, as Prabhupada said in the purport, we should, we should understand that whatever we do, whatever our occupational duties are, we should understand that um, these duties have been prescribed by Krishna for me, and I should do them correctly. And I don't mean to say that it, therefore it doesn't matter what our duties are. I mean we should make sure that we do what Krishna is prescribing us to do. And we should find out what does Krishna you know, want us to do. But whatever we're doing, it should, we, we shouldn't um, think that, oh, I can't be a devotee because I'm, uh, you know, a stockbroker. Stockbrokers can't be devotees. I can't be a devotee. I'll, so maybe someday I'll quit being a stockbroker and I'll start being a devotee. No, that's the wrong mentality. That's an external mentality. You can be, a, if you're a stockbroker, you can be a devotee stockbroker. If you're a butcher, maybe you should stop. <laughs> Definitely. You should find something else, you know. You could, you could learn to be a, what are those guys, they carve watermelons into beautiful things. You know, you're good with a knife, you could do something else. Make, make things for Krishna to, to decorate the altar for Govardhan Puja, which is coming up. Any questions or comments? Uh, are you going to celebrate the Dasara on Friday? Is that? I don't know, actually. I don't know. I think uh, Hansapriya knows. So check our website. I think Saturday we're having some um, 
um, you know, Diwali, and then uh, Sunday, on the on the Saturday and Sunday of the Diwali and Govardhan Puja. I think there's a plan to go to uh, go uh, uh, to go see cows, you know, uh, Goshala Yatra. Something or go see the cows and do some service to come. Talk to Hansa Priya. I don't know the I don't actually know the schedule and the and the dates. Time for Arati. Please put all the books away and thank you. Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam Kijai, Bhagavad Gita Kijai, Sri the Prabhupada Kijai, Sri Lord Sri Krishna Kijai, Hari Hari Bo. Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Vashtatya Deshatari Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Prachari Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Vashtatya Deshatari Kiba Jayo Jayo Gora Chande Arati Kasho Bakiba Jayo Gora Chande Arati Kasho Bakiba Jayo Gora Jagamana loba jana vita tavane Jagamana loba dakine nitai chan Bame gadhadhara kiba dakine Vāsa-chātra-dhāra-nikāte-yādvaita-śrīni Boshi ate gora chan Ratna singha sane Iba boshi ate gora chan Ratna singha sane Arati kare na brahma Adi Devagane Arati Gare Na Brahma Adi Devagane Nara Hari Adi Kodri 
ಜಾಮರ ದುಲ್ಹಾಯಿವನರ ಹರಿ ಕೋರಿ ಜಾಮರ ದುಲ್ಹಾಯ ಸಂಜಯ ಮುಕುಂದ ಪಾಶು ಗೋಷಾದಿ ಗಾಯ ಸಂಜ ಪಾಶು ಗೋಷಾದಿ ಗಾಯ ಶಂಕೆ ಘಂಟೇ ಬಾಜೆ ಕರತಾರ ಕೀವ ಶಂಕ ಬಾಜೆ 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 ಕರತಾರ ಮಧುರ ಮೃದಂಗ ಬಾಜೆ ಪರಮಾರ ಸಾಲ ಮಧುರ ಮೃದಂಗ ಜೆ ಪರಮಾರ ಸಾಲ ಬಹು ಕೋಟಿ ಚಂದ್ರ ದೀನಿ ವದನ ಉಜ್ವಲ ಕಿವ ಬಹು ಕೋಟಿ ಚಂದ್ರ ದೀನಿ ವದನ ಉಜ್ವಲ ಗಲ ದೇಶೆ ವನ ಮಾಲ ಕೊರೆ ಜಲ ಮಾಲ ಗಲ ದೇಶೆ ಅನ ಮಾಲ ಕೊರೆ ಜಲ ಮಾಲ ಶಿವ ಶುಕ ನಾರದ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಗದ ಗದ ಗಿವ ಶಿವ ಶುಕ ಗದ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಗದ ಗದ ಬಕತಿ ವಿನೋದೇ ಕೆ ಗೋರರ ಸಂಪಾದ ಬಕತಿ ವಿನೋದ ಕೆ ಗೋರರ ಸಂಪಾದ ಜಯೋ ಜಯ ಗೋರ ಚಾಂದೆ ಆರತಿ ಕಶೋಭಾ ಕಿವ ಜಯೋ ಜಯ ಚಾಂದೆ ಆರತಿ ಕಶೋಭಾ ಜಾನ ವಿತವನೆ ಜಗಮಾನ ಲೋಭ ಜಾನ ವಿತ ಜಗಮಾನ ಲೋಭ ಗೌರಾಂಗೇರಾರೋತಿ ಕಶೋಭಾ ಜಗ ಜನ ಮಾನ ಲೋಭ ಗೌರಾಂಗೇರಾರೋತಿ ಜಗ ಜನ ಮಾನ ಲೋಭ ಗೌರಾಂಗೇರಾರೋತಿ ಕಶೋಭಾ ಜಗ ಜನ ಮಾನ ಲೋಭ ಗೌರಾಂಗೇರಿ ಕಶೋಭಾ ಜಗ ಜನ ಮಾನ ಲೋಭ ಶಂಕ ಬಾಜೆ ಘಂಟ ಬಾಜೆ ಮಾಧುರ್ 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 ಬಾಜೆ ಶಂಕ ಬಾಜೆ ಶಂಕ ಬಾಜೆ ಘಂಟ ಬಾಜೆ ಮಾಧುರ್ 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 ಬಾಜೆ ಶಂಕ ಮಾಧುರ್ ಬಾಜ ನಿತ್ಯ ಗೌರ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ 
हरि बोल निताय गौर हरि बोल निताय गौर हरि बोल जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधादि गौर भक्त वृंद जय श्री कृष्ण प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदा श्रीवासादि जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधादि गौर भक्त वृंद जय श्री जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गोदाधा श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद जय श्री जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधादि गौर भक्त वृंद जय श्री कृष्ण प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदा श्रीवासादि गक्त वृंद जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद द्वैत गदाधादि गौर भक्त वृंद जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधादि गौ हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे हरे 
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare 
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 जय गौरनीताय जय गौरनीताय गौरनीताय जय गौरनीताय जय गौरनीताय जय गौरनीताय गौरनीताय जय गौरनीताय जय महाप्रभु जय महाप्रभु जय महाप्रभु जय महाप्रभु जय प्रभु जय महाप्रभु जय महाप्रभु जय राधा मदन मोहन राधा मदन मोहन राधे जय मदन मोहन राधे जय राधे जय राधे जय राधे जय श्री राधे जय राधे जय राधे जय श्री राधे जय लक्ष्मी नरसिंह 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 जय प्रभु पद 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 जय 
प्रभु पदा जय प्रभु पदा जय गुरु देवा 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 जय जय गुरु देवा जय गुरु देवा नीताय गौरा हरि बो हरि बो हरि बोल नीताय गौरा हरि बो नीताय गौरा हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो नीताय गौर हरि बो गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि बो जयो विष्णुपाद पर हमस परिवजाचार्य स्त्रोत्र शट डिवाइन ग्रह श्री भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी शिला प्रभुपाद की जय जयो विष्णुपाद पर हमस परिवजाचार्य स्त्रोत्र शट डिवाइन ग्रह भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गोस्वामी ठाकुर शिला प्रभुपाद की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय नामाचार्य शिला हरिदास ठाकुर की जय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त वृंद की श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीना श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गिरी गोवर्धन की श्री वृंदावन धाम की श्री मथुरा धाम की मायापुर नवदीप धाम की अयोध्या धाम की जगन्नाथपुरी क्षेत्र की गंगा मई यमुना मई की तुलसी देवी भक्ति देवी की सामवेद भक्त वृंद की ग्रंथरा श्रीमद भागवतम की हरिनाम संकीर्तन यज्ञ की ऑल गुरिष्ठ संबल डिवोटिस ऑल गुरिष्ठ संबल डिवोटिस ऑल गुरिष्ठ संबल डिवोटिस ऑल गुरिस ऑल गुरिस ऑल गुरिस श्री श्री गुरु एंड गौरंग ऑल गुरु शिला प्रभुपाद ताय गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि बो नमस्ते नरसिंह माया नमस्ते नमस्ते नरसिंहायादलादायने प्रकाशीपुरवक्ष शिलता कालाये शिलता कालाये इत नरसिंह भरत नरसिंह यतो यतो यामी तत नरसिंह तो बाहे नरसिंह हृदय नरसिंह नरसिंह मधे शरण प्रपदे नरसे मम दे शरण प्रपदे तब कर कमल वरे न काम अद्भुत श्रृंगा ललिता हिरण्या कशिपु केशवधृता नरहरी रूपा दाय जगदीश हरे जाय जगदीश हरे जाय जगदीश हरे
केशवद्रीता नर हरि रूप जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे केशवद्रीता केशमद्रीता नर हरि रूप जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे केशवद्रीता नरसिम्ह दे जय नरसिम्ह दे नरसिम्ह दे जय नरसिम्ह दे जय नरसिम्ह जय प्रहलाद महाराज प्रहलाद महाराज प्रहलाद महाराज जय प्रहलाद महाराज भक्ति विघ्न विनाशक लक्ष्मी नरसिंह देव भगवान की प्रहलाद महाराज की हरे कृष्णा एवरीबॉडी वी वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर टुडेज वेनेसडे नाइट भगवत गीता क्लास लेट स्टैंड वन राउंड ऑफ हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो वुड लाइक टू थैंक हिस के सकुलनाथ प्रभु फॉर गिविंग टू नाइट्स भगवद गीता क्लास एंड आई हैव टू लीव अर्ली सो जस्ट स्टैंड अ लाउड हरी बोल फॉर यम हरि वो सो टू नाइट्स I mean, this now we October month has started, and as all of you know, we have already started the December marathon. And those who were not here on Sunday, the goals have been like this: as we have to distribute 19,065 books, Bhagavad Gita's, and the theme is miracle at Latham Street. So we all request you to participate in this uh, Sankirtan program. So we will start from this Saturday. we have the diwali cupertino diwali mela on this saturday at cupertino and our book distribution team would be there to distribute bhagavad gita so if you can come there for some time and assist the team in distributing books uh, it would be great and there will also be other programs like motal sankirtan and uh, the more details will follow in the isp books yahoo uh, groups so if you are not a part of the group you can contact uh, his grace so krishna purushottam prabhu or malini mata ji and they will be able to help you and tonight's feast has been sp- uh, cooked by bhaktavasal prabhu and uh, we'll now sing the uh, prasadam prayers and then we can have prasadam uh, please have the prasadam on this side of the room uh, so that we have to do less cleaning and anybody who wants to volunteer for cleaning after the program uh, please feel free to stay back and help us so that we can finish fast thank you hari krishna शरीर विद्या जल जड़ेन्द्रियता है का फैले विषय सागरे तार मध्य जीवाय होती लोभ मय सुरुर्मती ताके जेता कठिन संसारे कृष्ण बड़ दया मरी बरे जीव जाप्रसा धन दिलो बा 
ಸಂಶಯಾಮೃತ ಪಾವೋ ರಾಧಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗುಣ ಗಾವೋ ಪ್ರೇಮ ದಾಕೋ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನೀತಿನ ಶಾಂತಿ ಪೂರೆ ಪ್ರಭು ಅದ್ವೈತೆ ಪ್ರಭು ಭೋಜನೆ ಬೋಶೀಲ ಶಾಕೋರಿ ಅಶ್ವದಾನ ಪ್ರಭು ಬೋಲೆ ಭಕ್ತಗನ ಏಷಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅಶ್ವದೀಲ ಕೇನೋ ಶಾಕಶ್ವದಾನೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಐಸೆ ಮನೆ ಚೇಯಿ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಕೋರೋ ಅಶ್ವದ ಜಡ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಪರಿಹಾರಿ ಪ್ರಸಾದ ಭೋಜನ ಕೋರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲೋ ಸರ್ವಜ ಚಿರಂಗನೆ ಖಾಬು ಮಾಧವೇಂದ್ರ ಪೂರಿ ಪ್ರಭು ಪ್ರಸಾದ ಕೋರೆ ನ ಭೋಜ ಖೈತೆ ಖೈತೆ ತಾರ ಆಯ್ಲೋ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಸುದುರ್ಭಾ ಬೋಲೆ ಸುನೋ ಸನ್ಯಾಸಿ ರಗ ಮೋಚ ಘಂಟ ಫೂಲ ಬಾಡಿ ದಾಲಿ ದಾಲ್ ನ ಚಚ್ಚಿ ಸಚಿ ಮಾತ ಕೋರಿ ಲೋ ರೊಂದನ ತಾರ ಶುದ್ಧ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಹೇರಿ ಭೋಜನ ಕೋರಿ ಲೋಹರಿ ಸೂದ ಸಮಯನ್ನ ವ್ಯಂಜ ಯೋಗೆ ಯೋಗಿ ಪಾಯ ಭೋಗೆ ಆಜ ಬೇತ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲಿ ಖಾವೋ ಸಭೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣೇರ ಪ್ರಸಾದ ತ್ರಿಜಗತ್ ಕೋರೆ ಧನ್ಯ ತ್ರಿಪುರಿ ನಾಚೆ ಜಾಪಾರಿ ನಾಚೆ ಜಾಪ ಪ್ರಸಾದ ಗೋವಿಂದೆ ನಾಮ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣೆ ವೈಷ್ಣವೆ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಪುಣ್ಯಾಭಿ ತಂ ರಾಜನ್ ವಿಶ್ವಾಸೋ ನೈವ ಜಾಯತೆ ಪ್ರಸಾದ ಸರ್ವ ದುಃಖನ ಆನಿರಶ್ಯೋಪಜಾಯತೆ ಪ್ರಸನ್ನ ಚೇತಸೋ ಯಸು ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಪರಿವರಿಷ್ಠಸ್ತೆ ಭಗವತ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಹಾಪ್ರಸಾದ ಕೀ ಜಯ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಕಮೆಂಟ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಪ್ರಸಾದ for those who have joined us online thank you so much for joining us we will again be going live uh, on this saturday starting at 7:30 am in the morning we are going to end uh, today's live broadcast uh, in a in a moment thank you so much again hari krishna <laughs>